Welcome back to the second video about the Pattern Maker plugin. In the last video I forgot one parameter, which is the length divided by the width here. This is a basically an uh, important parameter for patterns like herringbone. It's what it tells you is uh, how many widths are going to fit in one length. So for example, right now I set to 2. As you can see, uh, 2 widths will fit in one length. Also the width parameter now is grayed out because uh, it's being controlled by this parameter now. For example, if I put it to 4, now 4 widths will fit on one length and the planks will get longer. Um, there are also other patterns that uh, will make use of this parameter, for example basket weave. As you can see now nicely it has 4 widths in one length. Ok, let's go into the custom objects. Um, to be able to use custom objects you have to have a pattern from category 1 selected. Because it, it will only work with uh, patterns with only one shape. Ok, I've created a few objects, as you can see here. They're just um, some adjusted bricks. One with some gaps and one a bit distorted brick. Let me see. Have to select. Let's say this pattern. We set the width to ten. Because basically uh, these settings have to be uh, the same as the custom objects you're going to use. Otherwise, uh, the size won't fit in with the other bricks. So if I now add those custom objects to the list, okay. as you can see right now the probability column, they're both set to 100%, which means right now both bricks will be used for 50% of all the bricks. So if I update right now, all of the bricks are replaced by those two custom bricks. Of course, if you just want to add uh, a little bit random randomness to your, your pattern, you can just select your custom object, use this spinner to set the probability a lot lower. 8 to 7%. So right now, only 8 and 7% of the bricks will be replaced with your custom object. As you can see, just adds uh, a lot of nice extra detail, extra randomness to your pattern. Okay, I use the clear all objects button to clear it. So I've got another example. Okay, in this example, uh, I will just create my own custom pattern with this brick. I'll add it to the list. Now I will put the spinner to 100%. So basically it will just uh, replace all the bricks with my custom object. I know the length and the size is about 17 and 15. Let's see. So, okay, as you can see, I sorta created my own pattern right now with my custom brick. I could uh, make a little variation of this brick, also add them to the list, add the few percent to them and I have a lot more uh, added detail, added randomness. Okay, I've got another example. It's this brick. Add it to the list. This one I made a preset, example two. Load it up. This update it will take a bit longer because this brick has a lot more polygons in it, so it will have to make uh, create a lot more polygons. As you can see, it almost created uh, 40,000 polygons for this pattern. As you can see, I made uh, another own custom pattern. Uh, that's a bit uh, how the custom objects uh, works. Okay, next I will show the height map and the spline follow options. First of all, I will um, create a little bit.
bit simpler pattern. Let's say something like this. Okay, the height map. Um, what this does is uh, it uses a, a map to control uh, the offset in the height, the offset in the set direction. So, for example, if I would select the gradient here, increase the height a bit, do an update. As you can see, it will use the the black to white. Uh, how do you say it? The black to white information in that map uh, to control uh, the height offset. So, for example, if I would say row offset to zero, I could create a uh, sort of stairs. Banking does basically uh, rotate the bricks around, so uh, they kind of follow uh, the height. Let's, as you can see, it will just follow the the height directions. I can maybe show it better if I add like a noise to it. Let's see. It added a bit of uh, noise in the high direction. Of course, it put a whole pattern a bit uh, up in this set direction, so I can use the spinner to offset to take it down again. I also have the two little buttons next to this uh, this map slot. It's basically in Max Script. Uh, it's impossible to use the uh, uh, the drag and drop uh, functionality. So, and uh, those two buttons will just basically get the map from the material editor slot one and send it to that material editor. So let's see. Open the material editor. Uh, if I press this button now, it will just send uh, the noise map to my material editor slot one. And now I can just uh, adjust the parameters here, and it will just uh, update. So as you can see, it's instant, instanced to this slot. So let's say I would turn on turbulence, which wouldn't work nicely, but as you can see, it would just uh, update. And the same works with the other button. If I, for example, take this pattern of this map, click this button, it will just uh, use this pattern in the slot now. As you can see, created some sort of speed bump. It's not really nice, but you get the idea. Okay, by right-clicking it, you can uh, disable the map again. Let's go to the next option, which is the spline follow. I've created a quick little spline. Let's see, here it is. Um, let's make it back to the normal brick again. Uh, what this basically does is uh, it rotates the brick around to uh, follow the shape of the spline. My idea behind it, if you have like a street or a sidewalk uh, with a slight curvature in it, you can use this option to uh, uh, let the bricks also use that curve. Uh, let's put on the strength a bit higher so it's better to see. It's really good to see, but uh, you can see the bricks will be rotated following the spline shape. Uh, it doesn't work that good, uh, especially if the strength is too high. If you set it lower, you can add that little bit of uh, rotation to it. But in my opinion, if you have like a little bend or curvature in your sidewalk, you're better off using a putty form or maybe a bent uh, modifier. Uh, those will obviously deform the bricks a bit, and this won't, but as you can see, if I put the strength up to high, uh, they will just overlap each other. Okay, that's the end of the second video, I will make a next video to go over the last bit.